Ladies and gents, thank you for coming back to my channel. Thank you very much if you watch my Golden Globes reaction video and it's still there on my channel if you all want to watch it. Well, it'll be there forever. I go a bit mental. <sighs> Dare I, Lindo. Um, come what, Friday or Saturday, I will have a video out of me explaining what I think the SAG and the Golden Globe nominations mean for the Oscars, as well as me going back over it, my favourite nominations, as well as the snubs I'm most disappointed about. And obviously tomorrow will be my SAG reaction. Stay tuned. I'm not as expecting that I'll go as crazy as that because it's less categories, but I do think there'll be that one or maybe two weird nominations again. But that's for tomorrow. I want to try something a little bit different. I know that this is a predictions category and that is definitely what this channel is first, but I am just a huge lover of film in general. I've been a big fan of films since I was about six, from going through my dad's film collection to watching what was ever was on TV in the middle of the night when I had sleeping issues. I just really love film and I wanted to kind of show off my favourite films and films that have big influence on me. So I decided to choose the one film that may influence the reputation that I have. Irreversible. I'd like to make it abundantly clear. This isn't a film that I necessarily enjoy watching. It's not a film I put on in the background because it's one of my favourites and I know that it'll, it'll keep me company, come to the credits and I'll have a couple of hours where I'll be sucked in. But Irreversible is definitely one of my favourite film experiences. I've only seen it a few times. It is an extremely difficult one to watch. But pff, man, is it a good film. From the performances, how it's technically made. It is just a technical masterpiece in my opinion. Yes, I said it. I think it's a technical masterpiece. For those of you who have been paying attention to my channel, you'll know that my first video I ever uploaded was Irreversible. But it's a wrong clom. It was a one minute trailer that I made. I had to do it for, I think it was for college, it was like a task we had to do, but I was so impressed with it I ended up just putting it on YouTube. It's still up, it doesn't have a lot of views, so if you maybe want to help out, but it is what it is, I uploaded it ages ago, it doesn't really matter, but it's on there if you want to wanna laugh at something. It's not that good, but it was my first attempt at it, and for a first attempt, I think it's alright, but not a place to say at the same time. Irreversible takes the same shoes as 1917 and Birdman, where every scene's one shot. The only difference is that it's not one continuous shot, or made to look like one continuous shot. It's every scene's one continuous shot, and that's because it's backwards. They do that because they wanted to make like the first three quarters of the film this horrific, harrowing film to watch. Because what happens is, the ending technically the start, and if you've seen the film, the start is, is a very kind of horrific, intense, you see some horrific things. So by the time you get to the end of the film, which is the start, it's like very happy and gleeful, but the happy ending makes it a very sad ending. The one-shot technique of Irreversible is just fantastic. They did it because during especially the first three quarters where all the serious shit's going down it wants to aggressively grab you by the throat and just just carry you throughout the film whether you like it or not it doesn't let you breathe it doesn't let you look away from what's happening you just have to sit with it like the characters are and just deal with it and just see it for what it is and honestly irreversible might be my favorite use of camera work yeah films like birdman geniusly make the camera look like one shot but the way this film does it's brilliant. For example, if you've seen the film, the gay nightclub scenes, where they're going through the nightclub trying to find this one guy and they're being harassed and people coming out and grabbing them. And like, it shows you it from their fair perspective. Bear in mind they've come from a party, they're probably drunk. They're very angry and upset, wanting to find who raped this guy's wife. It would be like that. You'd be running through these hallways and you'd just be seeing a lot of walls and it'd be very intense and the lights are flashing and these fucked up people in there. I guess with the one shot I should now discuss the infamous rape scene in the alleyway which goes on for around 9 minutes and I've seen a reversible three times, I can only watch that scene once, It's, but from what I can remember from it, it is a fucking well made scene, like don't get me wrong, it's not nice but you can't deny how well technically made it is. Most rape scenes in films are very cutty and they avoid showing you the nasty bits, they're reversible, it's like fucking here it is if you don't like it well then think about how much she likes it by the end of it it's one of those film scenes which is so horrific to watch that you just feel your heart aggressively pumping against your chest and you breathe and you can't concentrate on what's happening in the next scene because you're just so taken aback by what you've just seen i've heard criticism saying it's a disrespectful to victims of rape and glamorize it i completely disagree completely disagree i think it does the opposite i think it's trying to show you how horrific rape is and just to give you an example of how it feels 
and I think this is Gaspar Wernoe saying, you know, what you've just seen, you what you think you've just seen is horrible. It's around about times a hundred for her, and it, well, not even a hundred. I don't think you can really times it. It is just horrific. I think anyone who isn't a victim of it should feel granted because I can imagine it, it ruins lives. Last thing I want to talk about in terms of the technicals of the film is the sound. Now, I will admit that I'm just reading this straight off the internet because otherwise I won't remember it. But for the first 30 minutes of the film, has a background noise with a frequency of 28 hertz, and in brackets, low frequency, almost inaudible, similar to the noise produced by an earthquake. In humans, it causes nausea, sickness, and vertigo. It was a cause of people walking out of the theatre during the first part of the film. In fact, it was added with the purpose of getting this reaction. If you don't have a a very good setup, so like you don't have surround sound speakers, try watching a rumble with headphones and trust me, it it hits and it isn't pleasant and you do find yourself feeling a bit like oh, and a bit sick. Like I'm I don't often find myself feeling like that, but during this film I definitely felt something. Like I'll I'd be lying if I I'm I'll be lying if I told you that I vomited or I had to like take the headphones out or I felt dizzy. But it does have an effect, and it, not more than anything else, it really does add to the stress of it. And like during those scenes with the 28 hertz, it's the scenes that I found myself most feeling like really on edge, like my heart pumping, like not really wanting to see what happens next, but at the same time so intrigued to see what happens next. Irreversible was only written with a three-page draft, and I find that incredible because, first of all, the pacing and how the whole story works out you would not believe it, this film didn't have a screenplay. This film deserved the Oscar nomination for Best Original Screenplay without the screenplay because the fact that they were able just to do it and kind of make up as they went along is just fantastic and it just adds to how talented Gaspar Noé is. Well done to him, I don't understand how he did that. I couldn't do it. It also says a lot about the actors because most of their dialogue was improvised and there are very few films, especially with the, the dialogue between Monica Bellucci and Vincent Cassell. I don't know whether they were together at the time or after filming or like they fell in love during filming. Even though it's a French film and I'm English, I've never really seen a film that more captures the dialogue between a couple and I just think it's fantastic. Like, yeah, don't get me wrong, you have, like, your argument films, like, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? But in terms of just pure casual dialogue or what people say when they pass each other at a night at nightclub or a club in terms of this film, Irreversible nails it. Even though I've just talked about it, I guess it's a good segue into the performances. The three main performances are from Vincent Cassell, Monica Bellucci, and Albert Dupontel. But all three of them are fantastic. But the two main standouts are Monica Bellucci and Vincent Cassell, especially Bellucci. <sighs> if the Oscars had the balls to touch unfucked up shit, I could honestly see a world where Bellucci got nominated for a film, especially like this. Because there's a scene in it where, as I've told you about the rape scene in the alleyway, the fact that she was able to go through that, stay in character. Bear in mind, a rape scene is always a horrific thing for an actress, but, you know, it may be like... 30 seconds at a time and it's many of cuts and they get to take breaks she probably had to do that scene over and over again where it's just continuous and she she just had to take it and the fact she could still act through it and not do an amazing job is just wow just it's like when you talk about things like this and you and you think about it irreversible isn't a nice film but it seems to get a lot of shit for just being a horrific film and a film being horrific and a film not being good are two completely different things is irreversible horrific yes is it a fantastic film in my opinion yes i've got two fun facts for you um the first being one that i think a lot of people know during the filming of this gaspar noe was the sole cameraman for it and because of this, he, he had to do a lot of the freehand camera work. And going through the nightclub and going through and following them at those awkward angles is a really tricky thing to do. So he had to snort cocaine just to get him through it. A part of me does think whether that's an excuse or whether that's genuine because, you know, say if he was a druggie, it would be a perfect opportunity just to get high. I'm not taking a bashy guess, but no way. I love your films. It's just an idea. Couldn't care less what you do with your life, mate. Your decision. And the second thing, this film premiered at Cannes on the 24th of May 2002. And that's a fun key date for me because that's the day before I was born. So whilst well, my mum was heavily pregnant with me, uh, people were fainting and vomiting at the screening of Irreversible. So fun for everyone all around. Thank you for watching my first review. 
Irreversible is one of my very favourites. I'm going to be rating films out of 10 on this channel. And it, this Irreversible, love me or hate me for it, gets a 10 out of 10. I just love Irreversible on a technical level. It's one of my, if not my favourite, technically made film. It's one of my biggest inspirations. I really think if you can stomach it, and obviously I'm not going to tell you to go and watch it or make you feel guilty if you feel like you can't handle it, it's fair enough, that's your decision. But if you feel like you can stomach it, seriously, give it the benefit of the doubt and watch Irreversible. If you watch it from the same perspective I do, you'll see what I mean. Okay, thank you very much for watching. You'll see me tomorrow for my sad reactions. Until then, so long ladies and gents.